the beauty of this project is that it's kind of just whatever you want them to look like is what they're going to look like, you know what I mean? Hi, today let's make this, a little wonky dish. It is a really lovely beginner project for anybody out there who is interested in getting into ceramics, don't know where to start, want to make some cool stuff. This is a beautiful starting spot. My name is Lily Maitzig, I am a ceramicist and also the author of this beautiful book, if I do say so myself, Hand Built, A Modern Potter's Guide to Hand Building with Clay. It's also available in these languages over here if you have no idea what I'm saying. We've got a French version, a Dutch version, a Danish version, and a German version. So your European languages, apart from Spanish and many others actually, are covered, available in all good bookstores. Anyway, today, we are gonna be going into how to make this little wonky dish here. This is gonna be part of a series where we go through some of the projects here in Handbuilt and we learn how to make them. Handbuilt is written like a recipe book. At the front end, we have all the essentials, all the stuff that you need to get started. And then at the back of the book, we have a projects area. Today, we're gonna to be doing this project here, little wonky dishes. So it's a really simple project, lovely for beginners. You don't even have to use clay if you aren't actually a clay person, if you're like a other material similar to clay person. This is uh, what they might look like. And here is an actual example of one. The things that you are gonna need for this project, clay, obviously. We need a rolling pin and some guides, a cookie cutter, I have a incredibly garishly pink one, a mold of some description. So these ones I have made from just making some pinch pots, bisque firing them once and then they work really well as molds. You can also make some plaster cast molds. This is from the bottom of a jug. I just poured some plaster in. If you have a bowl that uh, you like this sort of shape of the inside of or of the outside, um, maybe give it a clean first. This one's obviously covered in clay. But you can line it with some newspaper or some plastic wrap, pop that in there and then put your clay in and that will kind of work as a mold as well. But today we're gonna to be using these bisque fired pinch molds. You also need a rib of some description. So you can use a rib that you have already or you can use um, an old bank card. You can use an old library card, something like that, um, just to smooth the clay. We are going to roll our clay out into a slab. So I have pre-wedged this clay. If you have a bag of clay that hasn't been used already, you can just cut straight into that and use it. We're gonna start by flattening this clay out. So I'm gonna use the balls of my palms here to just kind of press it down. And that just helps when you're rolling the um, clay out to, it's kind of already flat, you know, you're doing half the work already. I'm working on an MDF surface here, which is just like wood that you can get from a wood shop. It's untreated and uncoated, so the clay doesn't stick to the wood. Um, if you don't have that at home or wherever you're working, you can use like a tea towel or a piece of canvas or some cloth or something to put down. Or you can use like a chopping board or something. You can just kind of dedicate that to the cause. Okay, we have this nice and flat now. I'm just gonna move these to the side and I'm gonna put my guides either side. These guides I just got from a hardware shop. They're like <laughs> just pieces of wood that I cut down to size. They're like half a centimeter thick, maybe a tiny bit less. If you don't have guides, you could use two magazines or something on either side, but basically you just want them to be rolling pin width so that the clay doesn't go any thinner than these guides are. So I'm gonna start rolling this out. And every now and again, I just flip the clay over so that it doesn't get stuck, but also so that it kind of rolls nice and evenly. Okay, so we've got a nicely rolled slab. I really like to just kind of pick my slab up before I actually start cutting it out because uh, it's really easy for it to get stuck. And if you cut your rounds out, um, from the clay that is stuck to the table, then um, you kind of like ruin the rounds when you start peeling those up individually. So peel it up really carefully from your surface. And that just unsticks it. So we're gonna use this rib to just smooth the clay. You can see that there's a bit of texture here on the clay and I just wanna remove that as much as I can. So 
so satisfying. Oh yeah. And let's do the other side. Lovely. Now that that's done, we are gonna cut these rounds out with the cookie cutter. Um, if you don't have a cookie cutter, don't worry about it. Don't go and buy one. You can like make a little template um, just from some cardboard or something, cut around that, or you can just kind of freehand it, that's fine. Or you can like use a roll of tape or something to cut around in there. Use your imagination. You don't have to buy anything for this at all. Right, let's just pick this up and kind of angle it to a point where it's actually handy for me to do. And then I'm gonna cut um, using the most clay as I can in one, so. Put that aside. So by spinning this, it cuts the clay really well. If you don't spin it, that's fine. It might just kind of get caught, but I don't know. I feel like giving it a little spin gives it a better chance of cutting properly. If they get stuck in your cookie cutter, no worries. Just kind of press them out and pop them aside. Okay, cool. That is done. This clay can all be reused, so kind of collect that. And you can wedge it up and use it later. And then these, look, you can see actually these ones are a little bit stuck. So the ones that were um, where I rolled the clay out, the water has just kind of sucked it up. So that's a nice example of why it's important to unpeel it to start with. Just gonna get rid of these cut marks. I'm just gonna put this board aside and I am gonna put my finished ones on here for them to dry and then I will come back to them later. So we have our little bisque mold and we have our rounds of clay. What you're gonna do is just place them on top of the mold and use your palm to smush them into shape. I like to kind of press the um, sides down a little bit and that helps to, um, I don't know, reinforce the shape a wee bit. And then you just peel it off and that one's pretty much done for now. You can put it aside and do the rest. I really like them when they're a little bit wonky. I think that it gives them charm. Like you can see this one, we've got a very wonky rim. Um, and I think, I think that makes for quite a fun little bowl. If you don't like that, then you can obviously do it a little bit more carefully than I'm doing it. I'm kind of just smushing them on and letting them dry. But you can see the bisque mold just pulls out the water straight away so it doesn't get stuck on them at all. If I was using this mold for ages, then it might start getting a little bit too wet and it would start sticking to the clay. Um, and if that happens, then just give it a bit to dry. Or like I made a second one, pretty much the same shape so that I can kind of have two on the go at once. Sometimes I do them where they're like a little bit too off-centered. And if I do that, I literally just put it back on and kind of recenter it a little bit and then repress it down. That one I've made a little bit worse, so maybe I'll just do it again. The beauty of this project is that it's kind of just whatever you want them to look like is what they're gonna look like, you know what I mean? They are by nature wonky and that's why we love them. That's why they're charming. Done, okay. I am gonna put these aside to dry and in the meantime, I have made some the other day that have dried a little bit more and we can do the next steps on them. Okay, here we are at the next step. We have a um, whole lot of leather hard pieces now. So you can tell that they're leather hard because they're still really cold to the touch. They're holding their shape, but they're not kind of flopping under the weight of themselves. And if we compare that to a wet one, if we hold it by the corner like that, it just kind of flopped. <laughs> um, that's kind of cute, kind of like a little pouring dish. So that's how you can tell if they're leather hard, if they can hold themselves up or if they flop around. You can also dig your thumbnail in and it will make a little mark if it's leather hard. And this is when you can do the next steps. So I quite like to get rid of some of these rough edges a wee bit with my rib tool. Um, you don't have to do this, it's completely optional. I just run my rib around like that and around here as well. Sometimes you might have some wee marks that you don't really like the look of. Again, on this side, we can see some areas where maybe my um, 
tool just kind of dug in a little bit and obviously I just did my thumbnail there so we can cover that up. And then you just grab your sponge, wring it out so there's hardly any water in it at all. And you're just going to drag that all the way across it. And you can see how much that softens um, the look of it. We we'll go around to the top as well and we'll do the same on the um, edge here, on the rim and on the inside as well. And that's it, it's done, it's finished. So it's a lovely little project. I'm just gonna put my wee stamp on the bottom now. If you have a stamp, you can do that or you can write your name or you can, um, I don't know, if you've got a wee maker's mark, put that on. We can see it's done. So I am just gonna finish up this board here and then I'll be done. Okay, and that is it. That is how I make my little wonky dishes. To finish these off, I will just let them dry. I'll pop them in the kiln when they are dry and I'm gonna glaze them in just kind of various different colors. You can go nuts with the decoration of them. You can draw on them, you can paint on them, you can do whatever. Yeah, they are a great little beginner project. If you would like to follow the step-by-step -step of this project, then you can find it in my book and built and you can get it wherever good books are sold. I will see you again in a week or so with maybe another hand building little lesson or some studio maintenance or a vlog or something like that, some pottery related thing. Thank you very much for joining me and I will see you soon. Bye.